Yo, what is good dev guys? Welcome back. So in the last video, we set up the functionality for our game mode to go ahead and create our widget and spawn it into our world and add it to our player screen. Now we want to actually create that widget so that we can pass it into this game mode blueprint class and actually have that widget spawn up on our screen. So let's go into the editor here and I'm going to go to my dev folder and create a new folder. And this is where I'm going to put all the UI elements. And inside this folder, I'm going to right click and go to this user interface and add a widget blueprint. Now, a good prefix for this is WBP for widget blueprint. And then I'm going to call this my player HUD. And this will act as the HUD that shows us our progress bar of our current power level and also showing us our, our progress on how much of that power that we still need to get to win the game. So just a brief introduction to this. So over here you have your palettes and you have all of the different types of assets or, or types of UI functionality that you would need over here. You have input for taking in input. You got your common things that are used a lot of the times like a, a button or a progress bar which is what we're going to be using there's also a, a way to create animations for each and every piece that you uh plug in here from the palette uh this graph here this is where you would create logic uh, and the way that they show you how to do this in the actual tutorial that epic created was that they create a binding and i'll show you what it is so let's just let's just get everything set up so we're going to drag in one of these progress bars and this is what we're going to use to show the progress of our power collection As you can see the uh anchor point for it is at the top left which we don't want so come over here to this slot canvas panel sl panel slot and in anchors we want to go ahead and set it to the bottom center and let's go ahead and zero this position out and now let's go ahead and say we want to add like 200 on this and it's actually negative 200 so that it's right now maybe negative 150 okay that looks good size let's go ahead and say 640 and let's call this let's call this good at 56 want it to be kind of thick and this alignment let's go ahead and center it by putting it at 0.5 and 0.5 this will take half of the length and half of the height and put it on the middle of our uh, newly adjusted position so what we want to do is go ahead and create this bind now. Honestly, this is not the best way to do this, but this will suffice for what we're doing now. The better way to do this is to have inside of your graph, inside of your event graph, we would create a function. And this is how I would do it if I was setting up my own project. I would create a function that set that progress bar and then I would call that function from the place wherever that progress bar is getting this information from um, but in order to do that since we set up most of this in C++ we would also have to set up this widget blueprint in C++ so that we can call functions on it um, but we also could mm, I wonder we might we might look into that, but let's go ahead and do it this way just to show it working. So come to this um, get percent function and in here we want to return a value and this value is going to be the the ratio and this is always going to be on uh, a clamp value from zero to one because that's what our progress bar displays. It displays a percentage from zero to one. And uh, we want to go ahead and get our player pawn and we want to get our game mode as well because these are the two places where this information is at 
And we want to go ahead and cast to our third person character. And it's not that, it's actually our. We want to cast to our battery collector character. And if we go ahead and right click this and convert it to a peer cast, uh, since we're using one character, this is fine to do. This is usually pretty decent if you have a single player game with only one character that you'll have all your information on. But if this was like a multiplayer game, this wouldn't work at all. Um, we also want to go ahead and cast to our BP game mode here. Also convert this to a pure cast. We're only using this because we only have one instance of each of these classes in the project. So uh, we know these won't fail. And from here, we want to get our current power and use that function that we created to get the current power level. And on the BP, we want to get our power level to, uh, we want to get our power amount to win. Then we want to go ahead and divide this current power by the power amount to win uh, to get that uh, float or the percentage that we are currently at. And then we pass it into here and this will return that percentage for us. So I'm going to compile that. And now let's go ahead and open up that blueprint game mode class that we created. And we should have a section to pass in our main HUD class right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it to our WBP player HUD. And if I hit compile and then I come in here to play, uh, our HUD class is not on the screen. Um, Let's see here. Let's make sure that the world is using our BP game mode. And uh, that looks right. Let's see, slate we're just done now. Toolbar. Again, something in the log about slate. So technically our bar should be popping up here. Um, let's see if our create widget call is actually getting called. Um, if main hood class, uh, uh, create widget. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I, I see what the problem is here. We don't add this widget to our, our viewport. So let's go ahead and uh, come back into the source file here. And we need to go active widget, uh, add to viewport. And in here, we don't actually have to pass in anything. Um, so once we create it, we need to add it to our viewport. And I'm going to go ahead and recompile that. So this compile time is taking forever. So I'm, I'm going to close the editor down. I'm going to do my trick here where I compile this project here. And apparently this is only happening with this project that I'm building right now or with the other project that I'm testing out in UE5. There isn't this many issues when it comes to compile time. We might be running into an error here and that's why it's taking a long time, but we'll see. Okay, once again, another successful build that took 187 seconds. I've already reported a bug to Unreal about this build time I have 32 threads it should never take this long I will keep complaining about this every video um but yeah so we got a successful build there so let's go ahead and run the editor adding one line of code bro should be like instant all right so now when we play the game our progress bar is now showing us where our current progress is See, we get a little power. Uh, uh. And now in the next video, I want to actually set up the win and lose clause and the functionality for both of those things uh, inside of our game mode. And 
we will continue to build upon this project and get to a po point of polishing. So if you're ready for that, go ahead and jump into the next video and I'll see you guys in there. Peace.